Today's video is sponsored by Fan Home. I know, it was my Sorry. mistake that, my mistake. Sorry, Sorry about that. The left-hand drive confused me. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Sorry about that. Better go back to England, I've annoyed the Welsh. All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today's video sponsor, Fan Home, has got me thinking about how some of the most iconic cars, some of my favorite cars of all time, have all come from TV shows and film. Often a car's immortalized in film, Straight away I'm thinking of, well actually there are too many to mention, James Bond and his Aston Martins, and Lotus and BMW. The Fast and the Furious franchise, the yellow P38 Range Rover featuring layer cake, the list goes on and on and on. So today I'm visiting a company called Car Chase Heroes who specialise in track days and they also rent out cars to the TV and film industry. I'm like a kid in a sweet shop here because there are dozens of cars from all eras. Fast, loud, rare. What it means is for a small amount of money you can drive something that you might have only seen on a poster or on the big screen. This is one of the few ways that you can actually drive around in one of your favourite cars from TV or film. Excuse the noise guys, but today is one of their workshop days where they check over the cars and make sure they're all safe before the next track day event. Car Chase Heroes have given us exclusive access to the workshop, so this isn't open to the public, this isn't a museum, so you will have to excuse the dust, it's a proper working business. Let's go and have a look around. Now I'm not too clued up on Ferraris, but I think this is a 355. I think it was featured in GoldenEye, you know the James Bond film, where it was chasing the DB5 around the hills of Monaco. Pretty sure this was the same car. Actually no, sorry, this is a 348. Like I said, I'm not that clued up on Ferraris, so it looks very similar to 355. I'm assuming the 355 came later. One thing I always loved about this was the stainless steel gated manual gearbox. I remember watching that in the GoldenEye film and just being amazed by it. This is cool. This, I think, is a 1970s Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. The trouble with track day cars is they do have a bit of a hard life. Here, then, we've got the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. So, this is a 1970, 1969 Dodge Charger. I'm surprised, actually, it still features the Confederate flag. It's really cool like this. It's hard to think of an era when you could just buy this from a showroom. It's enormous. This one's also interesting because it's been signed by the cast and crew members and then they've laminated over it. So you've got signatures there from the stunt team, from, oh, from Daisy Duke. Also you've got a signature from John Schneider. That's cool. This sort of thing doesn't really excite me too much, to be honest, but this is a Lamborghini Huracan, which is a replacement for the Lamborghini Gallardo. I think it used a 5.2 litre V10. I always quite like them from the back though, I like the louvered back window. If you can call it a window. It was very much a nod to the Lamborghinis of the 80s. In a unit full of supercars, I shouldn't really be getting excited about this, but you never see these anymore. That is an E34 BMW. I love the twin headlamps. Yeah, it's a 525 as well. It has seen better days that, unfortunately. I just love that era of BM. My dad had one. Oh look, there's the Toyota Supra. Same one was driven by Paul Walker in the first, I think, the first Fast and the Furious. The best thing about the Supra, in my opinion, is its engine. It's probably one of the best engines ever made. It's a twin turbocharged three litre. While we're on the subject of Fast and the Furious, let me show you what's outside waiting. Wait till you see this. This is what I was most excited to show you. This is probably the most famous car from the Fast and the Furious franchise. It's this 1970 Dodge Charger RT, and this actual car was actually used by Universal when they were doing promo for the film. And that brings us on neatly to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Fan Home. Fan Home offer a wide variety of model items on a subscription basis. Today they've kindly given us the full Fast and the Furious collection, especially for today's video. And I must say, the quality of them is really good. They're all hand-painted, they have rubber tyres, they're all fully licensed models and they all have a highly detailed interior and rotating wheels. The models look amazing. Fan Home have done a really good job of recreating these cars at this scale. And they just look really good on display. I've got loads of them around the office. When I was decorating the office, I tried to find several models of cars that I actually owned, like Range Rovers, Mercedes SLs and AMG GTs. So it's nice to add to the collection with some of these from the Fast and the Furious franchise. 
Head to the website, you simply choose your collection or build-up model, and then subscribe. Every month you receive the exclusive products and magazine with inspiring content. In your first package you'll receive two issues, assembly stages and magazines. Your second package will contain four issues and thereafter each package will contain five issues. All subscribers will receive amazing gifts during the subscription, such as a 1 in 43 scale Dodge Charger off-road model, exclusive t-shirts, a mug and three posters. So if you're interested, check out the website fanhome.com and use my promo code AUTOSFAST or simply click the link below in the video description. Thank you Fanhome for sponsoring today's video. Oh look at this! This is a Peugeot 205 GTI, the 1.9 version, they also did a 1.6. My form tutor at school had one of these. I'm not into hot hatches, but I love the 205 GTI. Really cool car, that. That there is a Ferrari of some description. I think a 360, or a 430, they look very similar. I think a 360 there. Over here then, I assume this is a replica, but it's a Ford GT40 in the Le Mans colours. I assume this is a replica car, I'm not sure exactly what it's based on. Although it does have the same door handlers on my drawer in my kitchen. But the GT40 was legendary, it won Le Mans time after time. There are so many cars here, I could be here for days talking about them all. So I will have to skip some, I think. I can't remember the last time I saw a TVR. This is a TVR Tamora. And I think, I think they all used an old Rover V8, either a 4 litre or a 4.5. Some were bored out to the 4.5. And something that's quite cool is they don't have an exterior door handle. It's under the mirror. So this is a Ferrari 599. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's got a big V12 up front. I've never actually, don't think I've ever actually been in or started or driven a Ferrari. Let's give this one a go. It's a 599 GTB. How good does that sound? I want one. They are cool, aren't they? Something like this 599 GTB is a proper Grand Tourer, that's what it was made for. So it isn't a stripped out hardcore race car like a lot of Ferraris are. So it's actually way more luxurious than I was expecting. Everything's wrapped in nice soft leather. Really nice car actually. Oh, I could get used to this. So there we've got a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, an Audi R8. They're both early examples, I imagine 2006, that sort of era. A Ford Mustang there. And this is an Aston Martin Vantage. Now when they first came out, I wasn't a big fan. I thought it looked like a Japanese design. I thought it looked like a Mazda or something. But they've grown on me. And I actually think it's a really accomplished design. It actually uses the same engine as my Mercedes AMG GT. It's a four litre twin turbo. I think they also did a V12 as well, but the V8 is the same as my Merc. And inside, all the infotainment systems are exactly the same as my Merc as well. So you've got the same rotary dial down there. I'm not a huge fan of this particular rear spoiler, to be honest, but the rear styling in general, I do love. I'm not sure if this is a genuine AMR or a replica, but these colours suggest that it is an AMR. Now, I got really excited when I saw this, because it's an Aston Martin DB5. And if that were a genuine example, it's worth half a million quid. But it isn't, it's actually a kit car. It's actually a replica, and underneath is a Honda S2000. You can kind of tell that it's not the real deal, because it does look a little bit more squashed but still a really cool thing. I suppose on the upside, it'll be more fuel efficient and more reliable. Such a pretty car, that. And inside, they've kind of made it look just like the James Bond car. It's even got the radar screen. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about every single car, but it's difficult not to. That's a 635 CSI BMW, which again, has seen better days, but I always loved those. Some sort of McLaren there in orange. Over here then are some famous film cars. I've just been admiring that California T as well. I do like those. So over here we've got the Batmobile. So this is a replica of the one featured in the 1966 TV series featuring Adam West. This was actually based off a concept car by Ford. It's got the Bat phone, it's missing the light off the top. 
But apart from that, I mean, it's even got the same style steering wheel. The door handle looks like an ashtray. Oh yes. It's quite cool, this actually, in a funny sort of way. That ram. I love poking and prodding all these switches. It's like being in a boat though. I've even found the light here. Now we're in business. Now I'm in a 1982 Pontiac Trans Am, as featured in the TV show, Knight Rider. This isn't quite accurate because the steering wheeling kit wasn't like this. It was just kind of, well, it was like that new Lexus. The original from the TV show was more like the yoke from the Tesla Model S Plaid. Behind the Batmobile, we've got the 1975, I think, Ford Torino from Starsky and Hutch, AKA the striped tomato, or tomato. And it's even got the light ready to go on the roof. I think while that Dodge Charger is still outside with the keys, we may as well take it for a quick spin. Right then, let's fire this up. So, this has been modified a little bit. I've got a brake there in the footwell. Turn it on. I can hear my fuel pump priming and press the big red switch. There we go. Now we're cooking. This should be an experience, shouldn't it? I think that's the gear, right. Where are my wipers? Oh yeah. Either on or off, that's just how they work. Perfect. Right then, first time driving the old Dodge Charger RT. I think this is probably the oldest car I've ever driven. It's quite a rattly old thing, this. It's had a hard 50 years. And when you brake, nothing happens at all. It sounds good. That's about all it's got going for it now, I'm afraid. I think this will be quite a short test drive. It reminds me of being in an old Land Rover. The steering's very light. You can imagine driving around California in this. Bit of wheel spin there. This is one of the worst things I've ever driven. Turn my indicators off, there's no self-cancel there. Driving something like this makes you realise how far cars have come. It's the next right after this, isn't it? You do have to brake well in advance. It was right over the castle grid. This should be fun, shouldn't it? This feels massive. And of course, I'm on the wrong side of the car, so I can't tell how far over I am. This first feature in the first Fast and the Furious film back in 2001, and it was driven by Vin Diesel's character, Dominic Toretto. I'm not the fastest driver in the world, to be honest, and I've already been nicknamed Dominic Toretto. In truth, though, you really wouldn't want to go fast in this. It wanders all over the road. It might have been different when it was new back in the late 60s, early 70s, but now this isn't a pleasant experience. Still, I can say I've driven one now. Starting to get a strong whiff of petrol as well. I can imagine around a track it must be quite good fun this, but not here because it feels about six metres wide. The brakes are non-existent. A bit like the fake engine that sticks out the bonnet. Going over a castle grid again. Oh yes. Not very refined. I can't get over how light the steering is. The steering's overly light and the brakes are overly heavy. In the film I seem to remember Dominic Toretto claiming that his was something like 900 horsepower. I don't think this one is. I'd be very surprised if this is a tenth of that. I thought that was a police car though, but it's one of those... <laughs> it's a movie car. I seem to remember in the film, he's got a line something like, I live my life one quarter mile at a time. He might have a point actually, because a quarter mile in this car is plenty. Right, well I think that's quite enough of that. I've had my fill of driving the old 1970 Dodge Charger. 
I'm gonna head back now to the Car Chase Heroes workshop and get back in my nice modern car. But as terrifying as this experience has been, I've gotta say a big thank you to the Car Chase Heroes for allowing me access. And a big thank you to Fan Home for sponsoring today's video. And of course, a big thank you to you guys for watching. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah? Yeah. I do. Is that you like, oh, I'm gonna speed up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was just for dramatic effect. <laughs>